Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Highlander News. Broadcasting live from the Highlands News Studio in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. I'm Ben Rosenstiel. And I'm Kat Finstead. Benjamin Franklin once said, only two things are certain in life, death and taxes. With the deadline for taxes quickly approaching, it is important to remember how the tax system works. Here's more on how to file your taxes. For many of you fellow Highlandians, 2017 marks the first time where you will have to file taxes for the previous year. However, some of you may have no idea what taxes are, why you are required to pay them, or even how to pay them. First, we'll start with what taxes are. Investopedia defines taxes as an involuntary fee levied on individuals or corporations that is enforced by a government entity. Essentially, the government needs support for its employees, such as police, firefighters, and even school teachers. Taxes are also used to fund community projects such as highways, bridges, parks, and schools. So where do your taxes come from? Well, throughout the year, income taxes are deducted from your paycheck. This can go unnoticed by you, since it happens automatically. Also, you may be more familiar with sales tax. Most items purchased in stores are subject to sales tax, which in Kentucky is 6%, or 6 cents for every dollar that an item costs. That is why a 99 cent soft drink actually rings up for 105. There are many other types of taxes, but teenagers are mostly familiar with income and sales tax. It is important to note that taxes are not optional. Failure to pay your taxes can result in hefty fines or even jail time. You must pay your taxes for 2016 by April 18th of this year. In late January, you will probably have received a document from your employer called a W-2. At this point, it is probably best to consult your parents regarding filing your tax forms and seeing how much you can get back, at least for the first time you file. Good luck on your first time filing taxes. Thanks. Remember to have your, uh, your taxes filed by Tuesday, April 18th. Good luck to Highlands Broadcasting Zone, Mason Bibb, and Will Ziegler as they take part in the Cinemania Film Festival. They got a prompt and will have to write a script, direct, edit, and craft it into a three-minute video of any genre they choose, all in just 48 hours. In other news, spring sports are just starting up. Trey, what do you have for us? Well, Kat, I have a lot. The Highlands baseball team has gotten off to a fantastic start. The team is currently ranked second in the state and heads down to Nashville today after school to compete against top-ranked teams from Tennessee. Hopefully, we can pick up some big wins leading to the game at Great American. The Highland softball team hasn't gotten off to the start they were hoping for. However, the team plans to travel to Butler and South Oldham after break or during break to play some great teams. Good luck, girls, and bring up some Ws. The dance team season came to an end in the beginning of March at Nationals. They were the most successful varsity dance team Highlands has ever had, finishing sixth in the country in hip-hop. Congrats on a wonderful season, and I would like to wish the seniors good luck on their future endeavors. The boys and girls track and field teams have gotten off to an explosive start. The girls 4x100 and 200 teams are currently ranked first in the state for 2A. For the boys' team, Nick Veneman currently leads the team in a 200-meter dash, running a 23.2. The team's next meet is April 1st at the Walton Clash Classic. Good luck, guys and girls, and bring home some shiny medals. The boys' and girls' tennis teams are playing very well. Jeffrey Shank is currently ranked 7th in the state for singles, and Brooke Hodery is leading the girls as she is ranked in the top 5 in the region. Congrats, guys and girls, on the fantastic play, and I can't wait to hear more about the teams after break. As some of you may know, the Final Four is coming up, and although the Wildcats won't be competing, there are still some exciting matchups to look forward to. Alex has more. March Madness has officially begun. A couple rounds later and already countless brackets have been busted, miracle wins have been pulled off, and Cinderella teams have made it much farther than anyone thought. But this is all leading to three days, three games, and one city. The Final Four in Phoenix, Arizona. And already, the city of Phoenix is riled up and ready to go. It was first announced that Phoenix would be hosting the 2017 Final Four back in 2014, where it was also announced that the next four would be taking place in San Antonio, Minneapolis, Atlanta, and Indianapolis through 2021. This is the first time that the event would be in the western U.S. since Seattle hosted it in the Kingdome in 1995. Since then, Phoenix has been preparing to host one of the largest sports events in America. Events taking place include the Final Four Fan Fest through the whole weekend in the Phoenix Convention Center, 
The March Madness Music Festival, Friday through Sunday at Hans Park, where past shows have been performed by Maroon 5, Bruce Springsteen, Rihanna, and Imagine Dragons. And the tip-off tailgate, where attendees with tickets for the games can hang out in front of the stadium and participate in cookouts, shooting contests, more live music performances, and pep rallies. As for the games themselves, they will be played in the University of Phoenix Stadium on Saturday, April 1st, and Monday, April 3rd. The stadium is usually used for the Arizona Cardinals football team and has been used in the past for the Fiesta Bowl and WrestleMania 26, but will be converted to a basketball stadium for the championship games. The stadium has a seating capacity of about 63,400, however the NCAA has estimated that the capacity for these games is closer to 72,000, as standing room and temporary seat tickets are sold as well. However, if you planned on attending, tickets are already running low. Prices for weekend passes on StubHub have already run up to over $400 at a minimum. The Final Four is one of the most iconic events in modern sports and the city of Phoenix is ready to bring it back to the West and make it great. Good luck to all your brackets and enjoy the madness. Thanks, that sounds really exciting. You know, I don't know about you, but after that Kentucky loss, my bracket's just, it's gone now. <laughs> Closer to home, the robotics team made Highlands history this year with their awesome performance at regionals. Here's a look into their amazing time at the competition. Earlier this month, the robotics team competed in the Miami Valley Regional First Robotics Competition at Wittenberg University. Seated below in the 40 plus teams competing, Highlands' Blue Grease Crew Team number 554 placed second in the whole competition. This is the best Highlands has ever done and it is very exciting. First Robotics is uh, an organization founded by Dean Kamen, the inventor of the Segway. Um, it's founded on the principles of teamwork, safety, gracious professionalism, and just the exploration of different STEM fields and giving that opportunity to high school students and even um, middle school and elementary students at different levels of the competition. Each year there's a game. This year it was Steamworks. So Steamworks is the theme and we have to build a robot to complete the tasks assigned by each game. And this year you could either shoot to get points, you could deliver gears to get points, or you could climb to get points. And our team decided to focus on climbing, very important, and delivering gears, as well as incorporating the shooter. So we built a hybrid machine that could do all three tasks. So because we didn't win finals, we um, will not go to the national competition in St. Louis, but we definitely made it a lot farther than um, expected and that we've ever done before so all of our coaches mentors were really proud. I'm very excited that we got to finals first time that team 554 has ever gotten this far and it was a good note to end off my senior year. Congratulations to the team for making Highlands proud and for all the hard work that went into making the robot. Good luck to the robotics team next season and we can't wait to hear more of what's in store. Junior Bonnie Lemma has volunteered her time after school at the hospital and our, at our elementary schools. We have more. Bonnie Lemma is a junior at Highlands that most of you may know. She is well known for her kindness and determination to succeed. What not a lot of people may know is that she is also a big volunteer in our community. Ranging from tutoring elementary school kids, teaching violin, and even helping out in our local hospitals, Bonnie does it all. We managed to get a closer look into what this student's amazing efforts really accomplish. So over the summers, I'm a team volunteer at the hospital. And this means that maybe once a week I go and like I stay for three hours, I help the nurses with anything that they need. A lot of the time is as part of our training as team volunteers, we're supposed to, like when we're finished helping out the nurses, we're supposed to walk in and really talk to the, um, talk to the patients and see if there's anything they need, just sit with them sometimes. I worked in um, this cardiac department, I think two summers ago, and the, the little, the elderly people who had nobody there with them, they were always eager to talk and it was always really sweet. Well, um, on Mondays, this is part of the Big Buddies, Little Buddies program. Um, I go over to Moyer, so this is a group of high schoolers who are paired with a little, like a, an elementary schooler. They sit at tables and they do their homework for about half an hour. They interact with each other and the Big Buddies are supposed to help the Little Buddies with their homework. And then after the half hour, we do a planned activity. It doesn't even feel like you're doing anything super like heavy and something super important, but you know that you're impacting their lives. Being able to help somebody, especially when 
Um, it's somebody so young and impressionable is always a good thing and it's fun when you do it with kids. It really makes us Bluebirds proud to hear of the inspiring work done by students in the nest. That's it for this edition of the Highlander News. I'm Ben Rosenstiel. And I'm Kat Finsett. Have an awesome spring break, Highlands.